gates with thanksgiving and with praise. We have heard the joyful noise. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Thank you for being with us today, Jesus. Thank you for your salvation, for your love. We bless this time in the name of Jesus. We celebrate the presence of the Most High God with us. God, we invoke your presence. Sweet Jesus, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, inspire and enliven us. Be with us now, for we want to worship you in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus, our risen Savior. Amen. 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 standing up there uh, and that's because as my kids told me I look about 15 years younger because I've shaved um, and for some of you, you may be wondering why did you shave it's only simply to get ready for red dress event the beard will come back because I don't like all of this and so we will we will put the beard back on uh, once red dress goes but we welcome you into this place again I'm Reverend Robert Plumbing I'm the senior pastor here at Love MCC I serve alongside Pastor David and we welcome you into this space this morning as today is Transfiguration Sunday, as we are ending uh, the Epiphany, we're beginning to get ourselves ready for Lent, it starts this week. And so uh, Easter is coming, and uh, a lot sooner than it has in the past. But uh, we are looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to Lent, and I'll tell you more about what's coming up in the weeks to come here at the end of service. But we welcome you to this place this morning. We hope that you are blessed. We hope that you find what you're looking for this morning, that you're fed. If you're visiting with us, if you're watching us online, we just welcome you here this morning. We want to say we're glad you're here. We've been expecting you. Know that after service, if you didn't get some beforehand or if for some reason your mouth is a little dry or you get that little tickle in your throat, there is coffee and donuts in the side room back here to the, to the back. And so even after service, if you need to get something before you go, we encourage you to do that and stick around. But we welcome you into this space this morning. And I believe it's Donna this, no, Irene this morning that's doing the prayers of the people. I'm looking over there and I have your name, but you're, you're over here, not there. But Irene is going to lead us in the prayers of the people and our passing the peace this morning. Precious and loving God, how wonderful you are. 
You have made the rains to fall to replenish the earth. We praise you for it, Lord. You have chased the clouds away and allowed us to have this bright, beautiful, gorgeous Sunday morning. We praise you for that, Lord. We thank you, O God, that you give us this place to worship. And we ask you, O God, that you show us the next place you will have us to worship. We know, Lord, that that place is special, that you've set it aside for us. And we thank you, O God, for that. We thank you, God, for the healing powers that you have performed in this church. We thank you for answering our prayers of healing. We thank you that Wayne is coming home today after 12 days of physical therapy. He was able to walk upstairs. Yeah. He was able to walk without all the help and all the contraptions that we're going to need without kind of holding them up. Lord, we praise you for that. It's been a long journey. And we know that your Holy Spirit is still in the healing business. And Lord, we trust in that healing power. We thank you, oh God, that, that our little baby, that Eddie's little baby boy, is coming around. He's, he's starting to feel normal again, or for the first time. But he's starting to be that baby that they need him to be. We praise you, oh God, that you have, that, oh, I forgot your name, I'm sorry, that your operation went well, and that your worship days, that you were missed. Lord, we continue to ask you to watch out over our people, to care for those that aren't here with us today. Wherever they may be, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit guide them and protect them, that your angels surround them, and that you bring them home safely to us. And all those, Lord, that need to hear your word, that they're, they're right on the premise, right on the crevice of coming to seek your face, Lord. We ask that you give them that little nudge, that you allow them to see that they need you, that this is a place of worship, this is a place of love, this is a beacon of hope. And Lord, we ask that you continue to allow us to be open for all. Give us that loving spirit, we pray, oh God, in all that we do. We give you thanks, glory, for all that you do for us, Lord. We worship you in spirit and in truth always. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. If you rise and greet one another and pass the peace of Christ this morning, hallelujah. scripture reading coming from Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 through 9. Six days later Jesus took him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves and he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, 
it is good for us to, to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Please remain standing for our response song. Callum was reading the scripture and he was speaking of the part of where God commands, look, this is my son and with him I am well pleased. You know, I have a tendency to be distracted. And so I, maybe it's because I taught language arts in middle school and we talked about when students are reading that you create this mind movie in your head so that you can really get into the story. And so I'll just tell you where I got distracted. James Earl Jones was saying that. Yeah. And, and this was one of those things as I began to think about, you know, who would narrate this? Who would be a good one? Morgan Friedman would be another yeah. good one. Yeah. But I was beginning to think, you know, if this was a movie and it was played out, who might be that voice? Um, and so I share that with you as a little bit of humor this morning, but just that, that commanding, those, those voices that just tend to grab you and, and call your attention. But this morning, as we think about this Transfiguration Sunday, as we think about what is being said, as we think about Peter, you know, we've all heard that saying, don't just stand there, do something. It's a familiar and urgent command designed to spur us on out of complacency and into action. You, say, you see, Peter ultimately barks out this imperative in response to witnessing the induction of Jesus into the faith hero's hall of fame by virtue of his appearance on the mountain with Moses and Elijah. Not to mention that glowing transfiguration. Overwhelmed and awed by the whole event, Peter did what probably most of us would do in a pivotal and poignant moment. Carpe diem. He seized the day. He captured the moment. 
he began to say, let's make some dwellings. Let's make it a Kodak moment. Preserve it all for prosperity or posterity. Let's get to work. He's saying, come on, guys. Get the stuff we need to make a dwelling, the boards, the hammers, the nails. James, John, don't just stand there with your mouths hanging open. Get busy. Do something. <coughs> busy. Busy. Do this. Do that. Got to get to work. Produce. Achieve. It's built into the very fabric of our culture, even in our religion. The Protestant work ethic and all of that. And yet, it's the source of the most common lament I hear from parishioners and even colleagues alike. We're tired. Having bought into the myth of identity based on accomplishment, and if we don't accomplish anything, then we don't know who we are. <coughs> Has this scenario happened to you? Maybe not. You know, I put up a Facebook post this week about it was one of those things where you tap and it kind of filters something back out to you. And, and the one this week that was running rampant is about your kidnappers. If someone kidnapped you, of course, mine, I put out there. They said, take him back. He's a motor mouth and we can't take it anymore. <laughs> so I share that. I preface that with this because if you know me, I don't necessarily work a room, but I will certainly, if someone talks to me, I will talk back and I can then hold a conversation. And so maybe this has happened to you. You get up on an airplane and you end up striking up a conversation with someone. And after exchanging names and where you're from, Usually the next thing that's asked is we say, what is it that you do? You see, our doing is who we are. So Peter's insistence on doing something is completely natural. But God's voice from heaven interrupts his babbling to say, hush, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Did you get that, Peter? Peter? Quit talking and doing, and for once in your life, simply pay attention. Listen. Sure, Christ's call to discipleship issues forth in all sorts of doing. But only as a response, not as a condition for our identity as God's precious children. Let me restate that. We are called into discipleship. And that causes us to, or calls us to do all sorts of things. But being called is out of a response, not as a condition for our identity as God's precious children. Are you with me? Yeah. The identity comes only as a gift, pure grace. It's free. And so it caused me to question, if you're like me, sometimes do we forget that? Heaven forbid that we don't even remember how to simply just be. Does anybody know what the most popular hardback book is besides the Bible that's been ever sold in America? <laughs> the joy of sex well, could be in some circles one of the most popular hardback books besides the bible ever sold in America is the purpose driven life we want to know above all else what we're supposed to do and surely there's a time and a place for that but we get so action-oriented that we often fail, like Peter, to be contemplative, spiritual, grounded, and centered in the essential reality of God's presence in our lives, simply to stand before in awe of the mystery of God so that our doing can be meaningful, purposeful, and sustainable. 
A formative work for my discovery of the necessity of spiritual renewal is a very small, and I mean small, it's a little book, as most of his are, and it's by Henry Nowen, and it's entitled Out of Solitude. If you want some good contemplative readings, if you want someone that can help you along in a spiritual journey and, and even encourage you, I would suggest look up Henry Nowen. H-E-N-R-I, and now it is N-O-U-W-E-N. Most of his books are thin and very easy and quick reads and really good to go back and reread and reread. But now and writes this, in solitude we become aware that our worth is not the same as our usefulness. We can learn much in this respect from the old tree in the Tao story about a carpenter and his apprentice. You see, a carpenter and his apprentice were walking together through a large forest, and when they came across a tall, huge, gnarled, old, beautiful oak tree, the carpenter asked his apprentice, do you know why this tree is so tall, so huge, so gnarled, so old, and beautiful the apprentice looked at his master and said no why well the carpenter said because it is useless if it had been useful it would have been cut a long time ago and made into tables and chairs but because it is useless it could grow so tall and so beautiful that you can sit in its shade and relax. You see the idea of usefulness versus worth. Now it goes on, in solitude we can grow old freely without being preoccupied with our usefulness and we can offer a service which we had not planned on to the degree that we have lost our dependencies on this world, whatever world means to one, be it father, be it mother, be it children, be it career, success or rewards we can form a community of faith in which there is little to defend but much to share because as a community of faith we take the world seriously but never too seriously in such a community we can adopt a little of the mentality of pope john who can laugh at himself when a highly decorated official asked him holy father how many people work in the Vatican? He paused a moment and then replied, Oh, about half of them, I suppose. <laughs> the trick, as in most things, is balance. <coughs> Knowing when to do and when and how to be just that, to be. Learning to take our calling and our work seriously, but not too seriously. To let go of our needs of control, that's a huge one for me. To let go of our needs of control. To listen for the voice of God, so that our actions aren't merely the proverbial running around like a chicken with our head cut off, but instead are true acts of discipleship that flow from a being that is formed in the awe and the wonder of God's gracious love for us. A colleague of mine is quoted, and I could probably identify to much of this, says, As for me, you might correctly accuse me of being wrong or misguided or even plain crazy all the, at times. But one thing I've never been is lazy. I worked hard, really hard. I've always been an overachiever, and I've enjoyed the affirmation I've received from that. But I finally did learn about five years ago that my motivations for working hard are often far from noble. And I suspect many of you have the same challenges. I stay busy often because I need to justify my life to God and to you and to myself. I want you to be impressed to think I don't know how he does all that. And here's a more difficult one. I stay busy because if I ever let up, 
if I ever get quiet and contemplate where God is moving in my life and what God might be calling me to do, then I might have to deal with that. And it might not be exactly what I want, what I had planned. It just might be something calling me outside of my comfort zone. Hmm. That's a my, my, my. I say busy to fill the time and the space, not to just serve God, but sometimes to block God's will and my discerning of it. I'm not afraid in the stillness that God won't speak to me. Oh, no. I'm afraid that God will. So enter Peter on the mountain. He wants to get busy with his own agenda because he surely doesn't like the agenda Jesus has just introduced with the whole take up your cross thing. But the voice from heaven persists, James Earl Jones. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. The same voice that beckons to us as we stand on the verge of this journey into the season of Lent into suffering, into the cross for which this transfiguration is intended to prepare Jesus, the disciples, and even us. You see, Lent, it begins this coming Wednesday. Lent calls us to re rediscover our spirituality, to be, to quit our frantic babbling, and to pay attention, to consider who we are as dust apart from whose we are in our baptism. God's precious children, forgiven, loved, held, and only from that identity, gifted and called and sent to do God's work in the world. If we don't get that being part, then the doing will only be chaotic. Frustrated attempts at self-justification or else grounded in fear and devoid of any joy. If all of our doing seems madness and pointless, we have to learn again to behold the mystery, to enter into a quiet place of awe. There will be more than ample opportunity and compulsion for living out our call to discipleship, to take up that cross. But in order to be able to do that, at least for now, don't just do something. Sit. Let me repeat that. Don't just do something. Sit. Now, some of you may be looking at me, well, Pastor, we just spent the last eight weeks talking about who are we and going beyond and doing all these things. And yes, you're right. But I think this idea as we go into Lent, as we think about transfiguration, we do have to take the time to sit to be still. We are doing things here at Love MCC. Man, we are doing things. And I feel it. And I, I truly believe our doing is a response to our listening. Amen. I'm excited about where we're going. Some of you may not feel that excitement because it's still that loom of what are we doing building-wise? Where, where might we be in the next few months? Pastor, we paid through April. What happens in April? All of those things. And I continue to say, sit and listen. People asked me this morning, what happened with the Wilbur location? I'll just tell you that the renovations for Wilbur that we were looking at, the location on Wilbur Street, the renovations are more than what they're even asking for the property. Wow. So that's off the table. As much as I would love that space. Mm -hmm. But I also look at it and say, you know what? God has something else. Right. There's something else out there. And in those moments where the board and I begin to talk and say, 
I don't know. You know, I've got a board that says, Pastor, you know, we got, we're getting close. Then Martin calls me and says, hey, Pastor, can you go look at a property tomorrow, meaning today, that's already a church, that's ready to move in. It's central. It's a little more east than I'd want it. But you know what? You've got to look at it. Right. Got to look at it. And you know, one thing I said is we want to stay central because we got people in the south, we got people in the east, we got people in the west, we got people in the north. That if we can stay somewhat central, it's a lot easier for people to get to. So I tell you all this this morning as we have begun to wonder. Maybe some of you are going, well, Pastor's been talking about who are we, and I'm still trying to figure that out. Well, the good news is, is we're entering into Lent. And Lent calls, calls us to be still, to listen. To be, to be. And that's hard. As I share, as my one colleague shared, is sometimes to sit and to be still is a scary thing because then we know. We know that God will speak to us. We know that we will be nudged, that we will be pushed. You know, Jesus didn't come to make us comfortable. He made the comfortable become uncomfortable, right? And the uncomfortable become comfortable. Amen. There you go. So we know that being, that there is that risk, that opportunity to be vulnerable. And as we've shared before in a sermon series, to allow yourself to be vulnerable while there is some fear there. As Brene Brown would say, to allow ourselves to be in that spot of vulnerability is the best place to be. <coughs> Or creativity. It just don't feel or like new it. things. It doesn't feel like it at times. Mm -hmm. As I shared with a friend of mine this week who I went to college with and just we only keep up via Facebook and she's going through a divorce and is moving stateside as she was in Hawaii and had a business with her new husband, now ex-husband, and all of those things. You know, and friends of mine had told me, even going through seminary when things seemed to be rough, is to lean into it. Lean into that storm. And then there was an appropriate meme this week that says, you know what? Maybe the storm didn't come to cause destruction. Maybe the storm came to clear a path for you. Amen. Now, some would say, well, that's great if you want to look at it and be positive and all. But think about that. Sometimes things have to be a little <coughs> roughed up to grab our attention, to clear a path. And as I have yet to experience, I've had many a bad days, but I'm still here to talk about it. God has allowed me to know that, you know what, time and time again, even when it's bad, that I'm still here. That I made it through. I'm going to be okay. But as Brenda said, sometimes it's just hard to be in that moment. So as I said, instead of don't just stand there, do something, I'm encouraging you as we enter into Lent, don't just do something. Sit there. Would you pray with me? Most gracious God, we give you thanks for all the doings in our lives the opportunities for meaningful work and vocation and relationships. Yet, Lord, we know that in those relationships we must be grounded in an identity that comes from you. Remind us of our baptismal calling as your precious children, loved, forgiven, and held. And from that identity, send us to do your work. Help us to recommit ourselves to that identity so that our work for you might become meaningful in this Lenten season. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.
I give because of love. My love for God, my love for each and every one of you, my love for the fact that I want a place to worship. I want there to always be a place for me to be together with my family. I give so that our new people, our new little ones, <laughs> will have a place to worship. All our kids will have a place to worship in the future. I give because of love. Amen. We have two offerings this Sunday. The second offering is our building fund. Will the ushers please come forward? <laughs>
ask this in your precious name. Amen. We bring our season of Epiphany to a close with today's service, time of celebrating the manifestation of Christ in our lives. And today's transformation, transfiguration is very real for me. For my beloved has been in Encompass for 12 days. Transformations that have happened are visible and you will see them next Sunday. Please be here. You will see them. Transformations are still happening. The power of God's love. Very real. <clears throat> oh, boy. I like to <clears throat> check emails and Facebook on Sunday morning before church. What if? I'm real glad I did today because Kevin Smith, Kevin Wave, mm -hmm. Kevin uh, did a post to yesterday or today and he invited everybody to come to church <laughs> now everybody and he just put that out there and he, he he did a confession talked about who he is and everything but he said god loves you no matter what amen. Amen. somebody say amen. amen and and he wrote him to come to church with me you get the prize today for inviting your friends to church all right <laughs> praise god for those that do that regularly <laughs> Not just about Kevin, but about, thank God that our church is doing that. It's giving some of us the oomph to say, come to church with me. God loves you no matter who you are, no matter what. Amen. Here we celebrate God's love. Thank you, Kevin. And at communion, we get to repeat that over and over and over. You are welcome at this table. Our communion table is open to everyone. No hoops. No barriers. We simply say, come and dine. Come and see how good our God is. MCC is around the world right here at Love MCC. This is an open communion table. You are welcome. Jesus said all. Jesus said whosoever. And we say, amen. amen. Come and see. You're invited. You're part of the family. Amen. amen. Kevin also said, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. As we are all. So we take a moment before we receive the feast to get rid of the stuff that we don't need to carry around anymore. Oh, thank you, God, for this brief moment just to sit here just to sit and as the song said be still and know that i am god god we feel your your spirit working in us right now and we say thank you help us to know our sins are gone in jesus precious name amen, amen. once again we celebrate on the night that jesus was to be betrayed he gathered his friends disciples and during the passover meal he took the unleavened bread and blessed it and broke it gave it to them and said take and eat this this is my body which is broken for you and likewise after the meal taking a cup jesus blessed this offered it to them and said take and drink all of this this is my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant poured out for you and for the many for the remission of your sins as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup do so, remembering me. Wondrous loving God, we ask that you would bless these simple gifts. Fruit of the earth, fruit of the vine, grape and grain. We ask now that you would bless, consecrate, sanctify these gifts for our use. May these gifts become for us living presence of the living risen Christ, in whose holy name we rejoice to give thanks. Amen. Amen. The mystery, the proclamation of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ shall come again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. The ushers will direct you. We invite you to come and receive the sacrament. Irene and I will offer a brief prayer if you wish further prayer on either side. The table is prepared.
come and see how good our God is. Thank you. 